God, I've made mistakes, but thank you for making me. I've done things I'm not proud of, but your word reminds me that I have been fearfully and wonderfully made and marvelous are your works and I am a manifestation of your wondrous works. Let's declare those words, those statements that we believe in so much. Come on, family. We are an ever-evolving community of visionaries, dreamers, and doers who have been called by God to live the lives we are created to live, commanded by God to love beyond the limits of our prejudices, and commissioned by God to serve. Called to live, commanded to love, and commission to serve. And right now, wherever you are, I want you to say it the way we say it here at FCBC. We live, we love, we serve. Amen. Listen, beloved, we are in part two of our series uh, this month, The Secret to Celebrating You. It is birthed out of this notion that sometimes we get so bogged down with life and the challenges of life that we forget to celebrate ourselves. And last week was part one. The title of that sermon was, Believe Your Fruit. Believe Your Fruit. Sometimes we suffer from the imposter syndrome. We have these feelings of inadequacy, really instigated by feelings of low self-esteem. The truth is, as we heard last week, borrowing from Adam Grant's book, Think Again, that oftentimes those who suffer from the imposter syndrome have competency but lack confidence. And if you have competency, that means you have the skills, you have the gifts, you have the belief, or rather, you have the talent, but you don't always believe it. And so instead of trying to convince yourself, look at your fruit. Believe the fruit of your labor. Believe what you've been able to do. Name those accomplishments so you can realize that you don't have to suffer from the imposter syndrome. That was last week. Today, I want to look at something a little differently, because these first two parts of this series are about the things that prevent us from celebrating ourselves. And again, last week was the imposter syndrome. Hinders us from being able to celebrate ourselves. This week, I want us to look at something else. So if you would turn to the book of Psalms, and this is a familiar scripture. In fact, it is kind of the guiding scripture for the FCBC be human movement. Psalm 139, verse 14. Psalm 139, verse 14. And it reads like this in the New Revised Standard Version of Scripture. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made, and wonderful are your works that I know very well. I'm read that again. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. And then Proverbs 24, verse 16. I'm just going to read the first part of that verse. Proverbs 24 and 16, another familiar passage. For though they fall, and the writer is talking about the righteous, though they fall seven times, They will rise again. Though they fall seven times, they will rise again. Come on, beloved, let's pray. God, we thank you and we honor you on this day. We are grateful, O God, that you continue to show yourself mighty and strong in our lives. You are amazing, Lord. And every day that we behold the beauty and splendor of your creativity, we are left awe-inspired. God, you've created so many beautiful things in this world. Sun, the moon, rivers, oceans, trees, flowers. And God, with all that, you created us in your image and in your likeness. God, we are grateful to be a part of the majesty 
of your creation. So God, right now, open our hearts and open our eyes and open our minds that we might be receptive to what you reveal in this moment. Because God, what you reveal will be for our living. We love you, God. And it's in your name we pray. And we say, amen. Amen. Let me read those passages again. Psalm 139, verse 14. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. And then in Proverbs 24, verse 16, the first part. For though the righteous fall seven times, they will rise again. This morning, beloved, I want to speak from this thought. These things will not define me. These things will not define me. I once read somewhere that we ought to define ourselves by the best that is in us, not the worst that may have happened to us. I'll say that again. We ought to define ourselves by the best that is in us instead of the worst that has happened to us. Or let me add this caveat, the worst things we've done. Some of us wrestle in that space where we often reduce ourselves to the things we've done or definitions heaped upon us by other people, and we forget that we are called to define ourselves by the best that is in us and not maybe the worst that we have done or the worst that has happened to us. I say that because oftentimes in our efforts to celebrate ourselves, we often have a difficulty in doing that because we do tend to define ourselves by either the things that have happened to us or the things we have done that we are not proud of. And we sometimes seek to navigate those emotions. And at the end of the day, there are two Two prevailing emotions that rise when we define ourselves by the things that may have happened to us or the things that we have done. And these twin emotions, this destructive duo has wreaked havoc on many of us in such a way that we do not always have the capacity to celebrate the best of ourselves. Those two things that hold us captive, that suffocate our possibilities, that cripple our best efforts, guilt and shame. Guilt and shame have wreaked havoc on so many of us during our own lifetimes, and it becomes difficult when guilt and shame have their way with us to come to a place where we can see the best within us or even see who we really are. Have you ever been in that space where you define yourself by guilt and shame? Because the truth is, guilt and shame are enemies of joy and happiness. Guilt and shame make it hard to enjoy joy. And guilt and shame make it hard to live in a space carved out by happiness that may be there waiting for you. Let me help you understand, if you don't, what guilt and shame really is. Guilt is about, well, guilt is about what we do. In other words, guilt is when we feel guilty about the things we do that somehow may be contradictory to some kind of code or some system of belief or some ethics we hold to ourselves, and we dishonor that in some way. So we feel guilty about the things we do. We feel shame about who we are. They are two different things. Guilt is connected to our actions. Shame is connected to how we see ourselves, especially when we define ourselves by the things that may have happened to us. And those things that may have happened to us have an origin. No one lives automatically or instinctively shameful. 
And no one lives instinctively guilty. Guilty is how we torture ourselves about actions we're not proud of, behaviors that we may have demonstrated, things we may have said. Shame is when you have internalized certain aspects, again, things that may have been done to you that made you feel a certain way about yourself. How many of us have been held captive by guilt? In shame. Guilt is strange because there are moments where we ebb and flow, where we often release the things that make us feel guilty, the actions, the behaviors, the things said, the, 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 the way we treated other people, maybe that somehow undermined the best or significant things about who we are. We know about guilt. We ebb and flow with it. There are days when we don't think about those things, and then there are things that trigger us to think about the things we've done that we're not proud of, that we then keep reminding ourselves over and over again, those things we don't like, that we we may have done, remember, because guilt is connected to your actions. Shame is connected to how you feel about yourself, how you see yourself, but we still beat ourselves up in both ways. Beat ourselves over the things we've done or harm ourselves because of how we see ourselves. Either way, guilt and shame work in ways that undermine us being able to celebrate ourselves. Have you been in that space in your life where you could not celebrate the best of who you are because you could not let go of the guilt or you could not let go of the shame. Have you ever lived in that space of heaviness where you almost feel as though every move you make is under the weight and the shadow of guilt and shame. It gnaws at the edges of your being. It seeks to diminish the value you may have inherently. Guilt and shame become destructive. And, and here's how I want to push you to think this morning. It was Brene Brown who, who said this. She says that shame is the intensely painful feelings or experience of believing that we are flawed and therefore unworthy of love and belonging. I got to say that again. Shame is the intensely painful feelings or experience of believing that we are flawed and therefore unworthy of love and belonging. Guilt connected to our actions hold us captive. Why? Because the truth is, unless you forgive yourself, unless you forgive the situation, unless you realize that the situation is over, you cannot move forward, which means guilt stunts you and shame buries you. Guilt stunts you because you feel like you cannot move forward past the thing you've done that you continually remind yourself of and shame buries you because it has you believing that you're not just someone who's done these things, but the things you've done that you're not proud of are actually who you are. Stunted by guilt and buried by shame. Stunted by things you've done you don't like and buried by an identity you don't deserve. Stunted by the actions you've committed that undermine your best possibilities and buried under an avalanche of emotions that make you feel as though you are not worthy. And I don't care who you are, no matter how you may pretend that these things do not weigh heavily on you, there are those moments when you are by yourself and nobody is watching and nobody is around, where your pillows become your tears and your tears become your comfort and your pain becomes your companion and your woundedness becomes the part of you that you can't let go of. Why? Because you were stunted by guilt and buried by shame and if that were not enough if it wasn't hard enough 
to navigate those emotions on your own, which makes it even more difficult when the guilt and the shame become chronic is when there are those around you who use your guilt and your shame as a tool of manipulation to somehow deepen the damage. Oh, I've learned that well. There are people who may be in your life who know that you are still stunted by guilt and buried by shame, who then use that and those emotions to now manipulate you in such a way that they keep you under control because they learn how to trigger your guilt and how to trigger your shame. And, and, and those motions that run wild in your spirit that often get resuscitated by people who actually want to hold you captive to those destruct, that destructive duo. And we often wrestle because we don't want to imagine that there are people who actually use those feelings of guilt and shame as tools of manipulation to control us. But pause for a second. They use those tools of guilt and shame not only to manipulate us, but they manipulate us so we don't look at them. And pretty soon you start internalizing the manipulation and you start thinking that the people who are the manipulators who are actually the tools of destruction are the ones who have it together. Because they've learned how to use it in such a way that you constantly badge yourself and beat yourself by the way they remind you of what you've done. These negative reinforcers of artificially constructed misery who often use these moments to destroy you. And I know I'm talking to somebody this morning because I can feel when, when, when you have adjusted to the misaligned emotions that are destroying you daily. We don't always see the sadness. We don't always see the hurt because you've learned how to navigate these treacherous spaces. You've learned how to put a gloss over the gore. You've learned how to cover the chaos. And people don't even know that when they are looking at you, what they're seeing is not the you who's really hurting because you've done well camouflaging it. And so here you are now, stunted and buried. Some of the greatest possibilities that can abound for you are held hostage because you've been stunted by guilt and buried by shame. And then there are those who use those emotions to wound and hurt you. You see, I say that because all of those emotions connected to guilt and shame, and especially shame, have origin stories. The reason why guilt and shame can be manipulated to be destructive forces in your life, first by you and then by others, is because, again, somewhere along the line, you accepted that these things are who you are, shame. Or you've also accepted that you can't stop doing the things that give, bring about the guilt. And you internalize that. But i got to help you understand something. That if shame comes from a place, part of the work you must engage in to confront the shame is to begin to search for the origins. What are the places that gave birth to your personal and emotional bleeding and bruising? Where did it start? And I promise you that when you begin to actually confront the shame, you will realize that it came from a place. But you're the only one who can do that work. You are the only one who can navigate those treacherous waters to see what stories gave birth to the shame in such a way that you became paralyzed and could not see your way out. 
Likewise, you cannot be held captive by guilt connected to actions if you make up in your mind that if you do the things necessary to those who you may have damaged, that you no longer bear the responsibility of holding on to the guilt any longer. So two ways, as shame gets confronted, you recognize that one, shame has an origin story. Two, guilt can be dealt with when you begin to give yourself space to heal. How? By simply going to those you've actually wronged and you apologize and hear me. It is not about whether or not those people forgive you for the things you've done you're not proud of that gave birth to the guilt. It's whether you've alleviated yourself of the stunting feelings connected to the guilt because once you've done your piece, it is not on you any longer. Once you begin to apologize and make amends for the things you may have done or the things you may have said, and that's a hard thing in and of itself because that calls for a certain kind of humility that cannot be held captive by arrogance. That you must be willing to go to those that you know you may have wronged and done something wrong to and be honest about what you've done and not even try to navigate around your guilt by not being truthful. So that means that the first thing to navigate the treacherous waters of guilt is honesty, humility, and then being able to seek the forgiveness that will let you loose from the guilt you've been holding on to. And then with the shame that may be in your life, it is then understanding the origin of the shame. But can I tell you this? The, one of the easiest paths to healing from the shame, that is when you believe these things you've done are actually who you are, is by sometimes just telling somebody what you're going through. I know it sounds simple, but it, but it can be transformative. Because here's the next question. How long have you suffered by yourself because you were ashamed of the shame? And we're fearful to share it with somebody, especially when you spent a whole lifetime trying to build up an image of who you are to avoid confronting the shame you feel about who you are. You've done it in such a good way that people around you actually think that you're pretty well adjusted, but not understanding the deep level of torment connected to how you see yourself. Beloved, Shame and guilt are those things that can destroy you in ways that death cannot. And when shame and guilt have their way, it becomes difficult to celebrate you. How can you celebrate yourself if you're constantly reminding yourself of the things you've done you don't like? How can you celebrate yourself when you feel you're not worthy of love or belonging. It is difficult, but there are some ways forward. And I want to leave you with that today because at the end of the day, this series is about learning how to celebrate yourself. And here's maybe a few things that you can do to begin to, to heal and move from the guilt and the shame. Here it is. First, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for the things that you may have done that, one, have brought about the guilt, or two, you think now define you. Or forgive yourself from internalizing the negative narratives that gave birth to how you feel about yourself, to those feelings of unworthiness, those feelings as though you don't belong. Can I tell you, you may not be able to address the origin, but you can adjust your association with the origin of the shame. That you can forgive yourself on one level for the things you've done guilt. And you can forgive yourself from believing those negative narratives that are steeped in falsehoods that do not exemplify the best of who you are. Why? Because you can define yourself by the things that have happened to you or you define yourself by the best that is within you. Forgive yourself. I said it this week during TNT. Show yourself self-compassion. Be kind to yourself. Be gentle with yourself. Be patient with yourself. Forgive yourself. Being able to forgive yourself will go a long way. Because again, the reason why guilt can linger for so long is because we don't always forgive ourselves. And I'm going to tell you right now, I've lived long enough to know and I've lived long enough to done 
to have done many things that I'm not proud of. I got to tell you that. I do not sit here as someone who has not hurt others and damaged some and wounded others. It's a myth when we begin to tell lies to ourselves that we actually start believing. But what I've realized in my journey is that those things that I've done are things that are in the past. And I can't hold myself captive to those things that I've done that I'm not proud of. But here's what I realized. I will not be defined by them. The next thing is that here it is. You forgive yourself, then unhitch yourself from the idea that what you do is who you are. Unhitch yourself. Because that's where the shame, we have this dysfunctional relationship with the negative things we've done. To break ties with those things we've done in a way that we don't begin to believe that those things are who we are. Disconnect yourself from that belief. And it starts by that first act of forgiving yourself. So that you can begin to separate yourself from those things in a way that you don't begin to internalize them. You have to disconnect yourself from the destructive narratives that you have accepted to be true about you. That guilt has aided because guilt and shame cooperate to create misery and pain. So one, forgive yourself. Two, unhitch yourself from the idea that what you do is who you are. And then here's this piece I think is important. Simple. Look forward, don't look back. Look forward, don't look back. Look forward, don't look back. You cannot allow who you are now to be held in who you were then or what you did then. If you allow what you did then to be who you are now, that means your entire identity now is shaped by regret for what you've done then. And when you allow your present identity to be shaped by your mistakes and then you believe that your identity is synonymous with those mistakes, you'll never move forward. That means every day you'll be constantly reliving the things that keep you held hostage in the present moment. But you ain't even in the present moment. You're living in the past that you think defines you that's connected to the negative treatment, behavior, actions, or internalized disposition that stops you from even moving forward into the possibility of freedom joy and bliss and beauty and happiness and peace. You've come through too much to be held captive by things that no longer hold power. You've come through too much. So to celebrate you in the midst of guilt and shame, can I add this last thing? Be grateful. Grateful for what? Grateful for you. Grateful for you. God, I've made mistakes, but thank you for making me. I've done things I'm not proud of, but your word reminds me that I have been fearfully and wonderfully made, and marvelous are your works, and I am a manifestation of your wondrous works. Be grateful. That God, the things I did that may have knocked me down are the things I can get up from. That proverb scripture says, the righteous person falls seven times, makes mistakes seven times, falls short seven times, but gets back up. That is how you overcome guilt. Every time you want to linger in the guilt, get up and be grateful for how God has made you. And don't let these things define you. And every now and then you got to remind yourself, I will not be defined by these things that have crippled me for so long. I will not allow myself to be defined by shame and guilt that have stunted and buried me. I will not allow myself to be defined by these emotions that run rampant and destroy my mental balance. I will not be defined by the things that undermine my emotional and spiritual well-being. These things will not define me. These things will not have the last word. And I will celebrate myself. I 
will celebrate myself because guilt and shame will not get the victory in my mind. Those things have occupied too much space in my head already. And I've made a decision that when I cross that line into my identity shaped by the best in me, I will not allow those things to have power over me. I don't know who I'm talking to today. But you have to be able to say, enough. I cannot live like this anymore. I've held on to guilt and shame too long. I've, I've become too comfortable in guilt and shame. And, and I can't be stunted by guilt or buried by shame anymore. That I will celebrate myself. That I will see the joy that is within me. That I will be grateful to God because God made me. And who God made cannot be defined by my mistakes or the stories people try to remind me of or the things I've done or the ways people try to manipulate me by telling me who I am. But I will take a deep breath and breathe free and celebrate who I am. Because can I tell you something? Celebration is infectious. And when you start celebrating you, it sparks a chain reaction of joy around you. That your joy and your smile and your laughter and your happiness and your peace can become so infectious that you, with your wounded self, become the healer in the room without even knowing it. You, you, victimized by your guilt and even victimized by your shame, but now no more. Healer, healer, that is you. And when you get to that place where you know that you're bigger than the things that used to define you, you realize that the greatest thing you could do is celebrate who you are. You are the righteous who falls and gets back up. You are the one fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. And when guilt tries to remind you of what you've done, remind guilt, I got up from that a long time ago. And when shame tries to tell you who you are, you remind shame, I belong to God. And those things will no longer have power over me. Come on, beloved, do me a favor. Lean in a little bit and let's, let's talk to God and pray. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time. Thank you, God, for opening our minds to realizing that that, that destructive duo of guilt and shame have held power for many of us. But we don't have to be defined by those things. And God, you have made us with so much gift and so much power. And we don't have to be stunted or buried. We can be free and fly. So God, we thank you today. Because somebody, oh God, needed to hear the chains break today. Somebody needed to feel a loosening of their minds so that we can bask in the fullness of who you've called us to be. Thank you, God, because we know this is our season 
filled with faith and favor. We love you. We honor you. And the best way, one of the best ways, God, that we honor you is by honoring ourselves. We will celebrate. We will celebrate. We thank you, God. We love you, Lord. And it's in your name we pray. And we say, amen. Amen. And amen. Listen, beloved, we pray that you have an amazing remainder of the day. And most of all, remember this. Do not be defined by guilt or shame. Rebel and live in the light and life of the freedom that God created you in. And you will, and you will lean in to celebrating yourself. Until next time, beloved. Much love, peace, 